All right, welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to do a little bit of a deeper dive uh, relating to photography and artificial intelligence. Um, hopefully by now all of you have heard about AI, uh, people trying to figure out AI, uh, concerns, ethical concerns about ChatGPT, but one of the things also that uh, I find a lot of students aren't aware of is there are the photographic ones as well. One of the biggest names out there is Dolly 2. Uh, it creates realistic images, as you can see. However, uh, there is also other generative AI being embedded into software packages such as the Adobe software. This is one reason that I do kind of like starting students out on GIMP more so than Photoshop or Illustrator because of the fact that GIMP has not, uh, because it's open source, we don't really have that built in AI yet. So you're still having to design, implement, and really work with the tools versus, uh, as you'll see here in this video, Photoshop, where I can just do a selection and boom, I can make an image. So starting off though with Dolly, uh, Dolly is from OpenAI, which is the same company that made ChatGPT. And Open-wise, as far as just testing the waters and trying it out, Dolly 2 is open to the public. They are working on Dolly 3, but you can just uh, go to openai.com, Dolly 2, and you can actually try it. Now, I've been playing with it a little bit, and if you're looking to do, at least I think, if you're looking to do graphical work as far as painting, sketching, etc. It seems to kind of really do a good job. However, whenever you're trying to do a description, it can be a little bit tricky. And this is actually an activity that I do like to ask students to do is try to get the AI to generate one of your own pieces. Give it a prompt that is detailed enough and see can it actually recreate, you know, for instance, one of your photographs. So let's go ahead here. I'm trying to think. Um, I'm going to do uh, a photograph of a waterfall in the forest. And let's generate and see what it comes up with here. So here also too, you can kind of see some of my testing on the side. So here are some of the photographs that it generated for me. As you can see, honestly, some of these aren't too terrible. A little bit dark here for my taste, but you can see like the other three, I'm actually not terribly upset with, especially this graphic right here. I could make this work as far as a project goes. Now, also too, you do have the option as far as variations on that specific graphic, but also too, you can do edits, but then you could download it and implement it into your own project. And that's where the big hang up is. So here are the, here's the original, you can see the variations that I've done on it. Well, not I, Dolly did. And this is like where we start to get into the ethics of it all is, is it technically my work? The way that a lot of the AI systems work is they go out and they are scraping the internet as far as learning from what is out there. So this is a generative uh, combination of waterfall graphics that have been out there. And a lot of people feel that that's not good. Uh, you know, you're stealing other people's work. Uh, however, there's also the people that, yes, they do argue that, well, the AI, you know, plagiarism is when you take someone else's work. Is the AI, you know, a person? And is it really, you know, are we taking the AI's work? There's a whole roundabout with it, which is why I really encourage my students, especially at this point in 2023, that you need to go out and research these things, you know, kind of see what's out there, see what's happening and be aware of it. Now, to give you kind of the other side here, uh, whenever we were first starting the semester here, I asked it to generate some the, a photograph of the Pittsburgh skyline. And as you can see, it actually 
kind of struggled with it a little bit as far as like you can see how the buildings kind of almost look mushy uh the image doesn't look very clear you at the bridge especially uh as far as one of our bridges here it almost looks painted so this was i thought a good example of okay this really you know maybe we don't have too much to worry about however now seeing you know the waterfall element get a little worried there so this is just from dolly as far as dolly you know adding graphics and stuff and i'll actually go ahead and download my dolly graphic here and i will open this with photoshop as well just to kind of talk about that a little bit further here now photoshop um actually adobe in general i should note Adobe in general uh, has kind of embraced generative AI and what it's doing is whenever you're working and doing selections, uh, it will provide options, but then it asks you to provide feedback to it. So for instance, here, using this dolly graphic here, maybe I say that, you know what, I want to actually have, uh, you know, maybe right down here, uh, let's try this. Let's see how well it does. So I'm going to go ahead here and kind of choose this. I'm using a lasso tool and I'm going to go ahead and make a selection there. And if you click on generative fill, it asks you, what would you like to generate in here? Uh, two hikers. So let's see how it does here. So right now it's generating. Didn't do too well on that. Didn't do too well on that. So what we would normally do here is you can actually click on this drop down and rank as far as the variations go. Uh, so let's go ahead and try hiker. Okay, so a little bit better, the lighting there. That one actually is pretty good. Not exactly the angle that I wanted, but oh, that one's not terrible either as far as, and you can kind of see how it's trying to do the cutout. However, I'm losing, it's not doing well as far as generating there on the edge. And then it's kind of giving me the same options here again. So a little bit still as far as having to learn and what it does is it generates a layer for you as far as the image is concerned or what it's trying to make so let's actually maybe delete this and let's try a different item here let's do maybe let's try a lizard love to have just like a little lizard just kind of chilling right there much better much much better yeah not so great honestly that's fantastic right there the coloring's a little off as far as you know realism of the colors there but that's something now like for instance if you have enough knowledge of the software you could go in and actually start to edit that out a little bit so for example here I would click on my drop down, I'd say good. And this is what normally Photoshop pops up with. I'll say agree. Eh, it matched my text prompt. I think it looks believable. Eh, I'm kind of neutral. I, I have to do some cleaning up. I don't like how light the shadow is there or the highlight is there. I would want to darken that a little bit. But then, you know, this is one of those issues where people sit there and say, okay, I think I'm helping as far as you know, Adobe is concerned, but really you're just helping to train the AI more and more. Now I have another graphic that uh, I grabbed out of Pixabay and let's go ahead here on this one now. Let's have a little fun with it. I'm going to make a big selection here once again. And let's do, let's do a sleeping dragon. Let's see uh, what it has learned thus far as far as dragons sleeping all 
that's actually not too terrible. Little little cartoony for my tastes. A little too dark, but honestly, uh, this one is probably the best out of all of them. I could go through and kind of darken it a little bit more as far as the graphic goes. Uh, but, I mean, the shadows look fantastic here as far as down around the arm and the claw here and as far as uh, back by its tail. Uh, you know, and the tail is believable as far as you see how it gets darker going underneath the rocks here. So, darken it out a little bit, I could probably make this work as a base point. But again, you know, this is where people kind of are starting to get concerned about, you know, digital photography is, okay, you know, I added this graphic in here is, you know, this is still my photograph, but, you know, this is generated from scraping of thousands of photos. Is this correct here? You know, is this the right thing to do? So. I just wanted to bring this to folks' attention. And again, this is more in Photoshop uh, as far as its controls are concerned and the Dolly website. GIMP, because it's open source, doesn't really have this type of control, but also too, uh, Lightroom. If you remember from last, uh, a couple videos ago, I talked about Lightroom and its control over photography. We don't have these capabilities in Lightroom either. So it's one of those things that, yes, the photo is yours, but is the element that you generated yours as well because it went into your photograph? And those are the types of questions that, at least at the time of recording this video, a lot of us are still trying to answer and figure out as far as design goes. So hopefully this gives you some food for thought and also how to protect yourself. This would be, you know, for example, where this dragon is. I would have gone and prior to uploading my photo, if I wanted to have a copyright on my photo, I would have maybe lined the entire image with my name and kind of did that overlay of, you know, uh, with the normal here, I would have done like the soft light as far as making it a little bit more difficult for the AI to generate on top of that. So hopefully this gives you some thoughts uh, as far as your designs go and, you know, Definitely do some research and see what you think as far as, you know, what is, you know, ethical about it.